Hi, I'm Kurt Daw, the editor of the Player's Reference Shakespeare Midsummer Night's Dream. And I'm here to demo this new digital tool for you today. So I'm going to take just one second here and um, share my screen. Okay, here we go. So now you'll get a chance to see how this tool works. You're going to go first right here to this address, kurtdaw.com slash experiential, and it'll take you here to the title page. And just under the title page, you'll be able to see a quick start guide. You can click on that and get information about how the edition works, but I'm about to show you. So I'm going to skip that for right now and scroll right down here into the main text of the play. You can see a nice clean presentation here, uh, but this digital edition actually appears in four different modes. And that's the thing that I want to show you first. If you go down here to the lower right corner, you'll see a green dot. And if you click on that dot, the interface unfolds. Then you go right over here to reader mode, which is where we want to start. Click first in that red block, and then again, and you'll notice that the text of the play down here below has changed its presentation. The lines now have line numbers in front of them, and they also have little interlineal glosses that you can see here explaining what some of the words mean that might be tricky or hard to get at first. And this is the place that most people are going to want to start just reading the play. At the top of the unit, of course, you'll find information every time about what happens in the unit, how long that unit is in terms of lines, average playing time, about a minute, 15 seconds, and in most units, some kind of visual reference to give you an idea about how it might look on the stage. Then get yourself started in reader mode till you understand the words and what the section means. Then you're going to want to move over one block to student mode and click here. You'll notice the text has changed its appearance again. Now the line numbers are gone, but some of the words appear in blue. And if you click on any one of those words, a note will scroll up from the bottom, be available to you, and you can scroll through the entire length of the note if you need to. In this case, a performance history note to help explain that Shakespeare probably played the role of Theseus himself. Then, when you're done with the note, you'll notice just behind the word there's a little circle with an X that's appeared. You click on that, and the note disappears again. The third mode is performer mode. When you click on it, you notice the text again changes. Some of the words have turned green. And not only that, they have also changed their appearance. Like here, where the word nuptial, N-U-P-T-I-A-L, used to appear, now you get it in a sort of phonetic form, nuptial, to make sure that you understand it's a two-syllable word in this location. Again, down here, withering is now appears as appearing as withering, a two-syllable word. You can probably just sight read in performer mode. That's the idea. But if you want to know what's going on, you can always click on the words. Up will scroll a note. It'll tell you this is a scansion note that involves a shortening. You can see the word here with the dictionary phonetic pronunciation, and there it is in the international phonetic alphabet. A complete explanation available for every note. Also in performer mode, all musical cues throughout the entire play appear. You'll notice that this little musical symbol right here at the top, at the end of the first stage direction, has turned green. If you click on that in performer mode, note will scroll up and they'll tell you what the original music might have been, what it might have sounded like, and how this cue is performed in contemporary performances. Finally, there is practice mode. 
In practice mode, you'll notice that the speech headings, those little words that tell you who is speaking, have changed their color into the olive green color of this uh, mode. And if you click on any one of those speech headings, you'll notice that the character's lines, in fact, all of the lines through the entire play for that character are now highlighted. You can use this to quickly find your character's lines and work on memorization. And then if you want to test your memorization, just click on that speech heading one more time and the lines disappear. You can use this to help memorize and check yourself. You can always go back and check instantly. If you don't know the line, click again, it'll appear. Work on memorizing it, highlight it, make it disappear again. And this little gamification helps those who are learning a speech or an entire role for this play. Now, that's the main interface. But if you come over here to the right margin, you'll notice a vertical black stripe. And if you click in that, you'll find a table of contents for this entire fully featured edition. Before the play begins even, you'll find the instructions about how to use the uh, interface all over again, but also a list of characters and an essay about doubling in the play, telling you which characters can double with which other characters, that is if an actor is playing two or more roles. Then you'll see all the units in the entire play. These can be clicked on and navigate to any spot in the play instantly. And in the aftermatter, there's another set of resources, especially of interest to students are probably the textual history, the performance history, a full essay on the music and dance involved in this production. Midsummer Night's Dream has a lot of very important songs and dances that have plot implications. Some annotated resources, especially how you can look at facsimiles of the original editions published during Shakespeare's lifetime to see exactly what they first looked like. And an essay on scansion, teaching you how to scan the uh, entire play and outlining the principles that are used for the scansion that is displayed there in performer mode. Finishes with a selected bibliography. You just click anywhere in the table of contents to make it disappear again. All right, that's a very quick overview, but I hope you'll find it helpful to you uh, just to get an idea how the edition works. Uh, and it would be my pleasure to hear from you about how you liked it. Thanks.